Ich bin jetzt leider das ist nass. Dann ist hier nicht mehr Punkt. Ich glaube, es gibt keine großen Probleme da. Und ich denke, am Thursday, Michael ist noch nicht hier am Thursday, aber ich denke, mein PhD ist gut. Und was haben wir für die Probleme am Thursday? So, das sind die Questions. So, we come back to what we started last time. Remember last time we had uh, optimal deriving for the calculate fields and uh, potentials from distributed charges, condensing that to the single point charge. And in particular, we made the point that it's not simply the Q over R at the target time, so that gives you the potential. You have to take into account this, this light travel time contraction factor. Remember there was some factor like one minus V over C cosine theta. <coughs> theta is the angle between velocity and our line of sight. So by which effectively the volume over which you integrate was larger than the actual common volume. So that gave you these expressions that we had derived last time for so the potential, so for the Scalar potential, yes, that's effectively the multiplied in by R. And then the vector potential simply has a factor of the particle's velocity. And we introduce the name of these potentials, so the potentials of a single moving point charge, because B and R, we said potentials. We see all the potentials in that Good. So let's start out with an example, see how one can actually use this and calculate something. So the example is this in the book. If we simply assume not a curved path, so generally the particle has some kind of accelerated curved motion, some, some path W, from which we see the potentials was only at the retarded time. Everybody remembers, of course, that the, the retarded time was the actual time at which we see something minus R of the C. Right? So, for an example, <coughs> let's simply assume the particle to have some, some straight velocity v and w of t is just times t, right? or for us relevant as well as at the times. So simply meaning that the particle is not curved, it's not accelerated, it's just going to constant velocity. Then, in order to evaluate this, uh, we need to figure out what is r, what is this length value at the retarded time. And well, what is this? This dot product with the velocity. And for that, we first have to figure out so what is the retarded time? So at the time where we see the potentials, this of course gives us the retarded time. What's the condition for the retarded time? We can simply get from this. Point. So we know that the length r, or this is our position, minus. ETR, right? ETR is the position of the particle, that's our position. So R is the connection between us and the particle. The length of this, you can simply get from this as C T minus TR, right? So that means if we just square on this, square, 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 then we get that R squared minus R, V, T, R, plus V squared, T, R squared, equals C squared, minus 20, plus T, R squared. That, but there's a simple quadratic equation, everybody can solve quadratic equations. We don't need to write this down, you can see it in the book. So, this gives you the value of T, R. So then we have figured out what TR is, and we can just calculate what, what these uh, expressions are. So, 
So we know what the length r is. That we can simply plug in with the for t minus t r. And well, we have the unit vector r as r minus t r over the length of the latest band is just t minus t r. Right? This is this is the r. Okay. And, and we don't you don't learn much if I just write out all the math now. It's obvious what you now do to actually evaluate what is um, RC minus RB. What we find out in the end, so we don't have to go through all the steps, what we find out in the end is that we get for the potential, we just plug off this in, the expression that looks like this. That would be quite lengthy and not very instructive to go through the entire math. <coughs> but you can just look at what's what this character actually means. So what so first of all, it's interesting that this is q over q over r, which would be if nothing is moving, and this is simply Coulomb's law for the potential of the static point charge. Now the potential that we feel from the charge, charge funnily actually depends not on the distance to the retarded point, but on the distance to the point where the source where the point charge is right now. Which is quite surprising, but if you just take the math, 
too large. It's, it's actually just the distance to the point right now. But with this correction factor here, that depends on the velocity, because this factor is simply just one, the velocity is zero, the point the charge is just stationary, and depends on the direction in which we're looking at the particle. So if we're looking at, so if we're looking straight forward, sine theta is zero, then so theta is zero, sine theta is zero, then this is simply just the point. So let's say in the forward direction, we see a certain value. If we're looking, say, at 90 degrees, sine theta is then 1. Then we have a 1 minus v e squared over c squared. If the velocity comes close to velocity of light, then 1 minus v e squared over c squared can be a very small number. We have 1 over this very small number. That means the potentials are actually much larger going in the direction this way. Draw that this way. In the forward direction, we see relatively weak potentials. If you look at this thing from the side, we actually see much, much stronger potentials. That's essentially what that tells us. So we'll, we'll come back to this. Probably the simplest example, apart from a steady point charge that one can do. So we'll come back after we've now figured out how we can actually calculate the electric and magnetic fields from these charges. Come back to this example and do that just for a steady moving point charge. Any questions on this so far? If not, so now deriving the fields from, from these potentials, all we have to do is, everybody remembers, we calculate the electric field from the potentials. We calculate the electric field from the potentials. So we can, for example, start out. What is 
what is the gradient of R, but we know that the gradient of R is, well, R is C T minus TR, right? So, one fundamental expression that we will need, because the gradient T has no special gradient, but TR does, and the retarded time depends on our distance from the source. So this is just minus C gradient of TR. And the gradient of TR, that's what we'll have to figure out. We'll see that in many of the other terms involved here, the gradient of TR will come in as well. So that is one part. The second part actually gets more complicated. That's why I've written this, this general expression for the gradient of a dot product of two vectors. I'm not sure if you have derived that at some point. Then if you just write this out component by component, you can verify that you can write that gradient of a dot product in these four terms as they are. And apply that to this expression here, right? So we can apply that to gradient of R of V gives us R dot gradient applied to vector V minus plus V dot nabla applied to R and then these cross products R cross curl of V plus And this is where it's getting messy. I think what we should do is only go through one or two of these terms that you can see how we get some of the velocities and accelerations in there. So let's, for example, start with this first term. So R, also then to, to illustrate what these expressions really mean. So R dot nabla. Well, this is r dot nabla means written out x component of r d over dx of v plus y d over dy on v plus r z z on v right now. Is there a derivative? So this is the velocity v of the particle at the retarded time, and we take the derivative of the gradient with respect to wobbling around here. Does v, v of the retarded time depend on where we are here? So is there a derivative then, or does that just go up? This is V at the retarded time, right? So is there a derivative first then? Or at the least derivative is always 12 hours instead of this that, is that all zero? It's not, right? Because it depends on the retarded time. Maybe write this out here. The retarded time depends on where we are. So there is a derivative. So the derivative here, so let's start out, this would be Rx. The derivative that comes in is still the derivative with respect to time. So there's an A that is so for acceleration, Vn, V over T retarded, right? So the acceleration comes in there, and then we have to take the in a derivative dt r over dx, right? And the same for the y and z components. Actually, 